So in the interest of knowing everything I can about Protel payphones, because there just doesn't seem to be all that much out there about them, other than the work I did with the ExpressNet software a long time ago, um, I did some digging through old tech bulletins on the Protel website, and found some firmware release notes that showed after 1996 there was a firmware released for 310 and 7000 boards, um, and it's probably default on all of them by now, um, that introduces a feature called the console operator. Now, I, I was looking for a way to figure out if an operator could collect or return money, and it looks like the console operator is how that's achieved. Uh, it's accessed by a Protel payphone user dialing 211, and um, we'll have my payphone next to me do that, and um, we'll show you kind of what it does. There are commands that you can enter through touch tones. They all follow pound, pound, one through pound, pound, nine, and depending on what you need, um, there may be more instructions that you have to type in. Um, just going down the list, you can report the A and I of the phone to the caller, um, and then you can, to the operator, report the last successful call and last um, failed call. You can just terminate the call. You can set a new destination number for the caller to reach once you hang up. Um, you can check the hopper to see how many coins are in there, how much money is in there, I should say. Um, you can refund anything that's in the hopper. You can just terminate the call. You can reroute the call after you've put in a new destination number. That's a separate command. And then finally, you can define a new rate table for the next call, meaning that if the operator is going to send someone somewhere else, they can actually dictate how much that call is going to cost if for some reason they needed to. Um, and I'll go through all these features now. Um, I'm just going to wait for the payphone to ring in. I have 211 on my switch going to the operator at my desk, which is the phone I'm talking from. So we'll come back as soon as 211 rings in. And there we go. Um, so we can start by doing just the, uh, I believe this is the last successful call. We'll do pound, pound, one. It's giving them, I think, the A and I right now. 25 cents, 6 seconds. So that told me, um, it read the customer, the ANI of the phone, and then told me how long the last successful call was for and how much they paid for it. So it was a 6 second call. And it was uh, 25 cents. I'm not going to sit here and do all of the commands, but I'll just show you kind of a practical application. Um, so, one of the things that you can do, um, by dialing 211, coin tones are enabled so the operator will hear the customer putting coins in. So let's say they put in a quarter. You know what, we'll have them do 75 cents, why not? So we can hear that. Now if I did pound pound five, I can check the hopper and it'll tell me. 75 cents. Say I decided that, you know what, you've been inconvenienced enough by having calls that didn't go through. I'm going to make this next call, I don't know, 25 cents instead of 75 cents. First thing I'm going to do is hit pound pound six, and we'll hear the phone fire its relay and refund the money. So now their money is back in the phone's return slot. We're going to say their next call is 25 cents. So here's how this works. I'm going to ask them to deposit 25 cents. I will check the hopper even though I know. 25 cents. Great, now let's define a new rate table. We'll do pound, pound, nine. This now mutes the customer, he can't hear what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to type in is the initial charge, so 025 for 25 cents. Um, the amount of time that they can spend on this call, I will do 00 for unlimited. The overtime charge, which in this case is going to be nothing, so zero, zero, zero. And I'm doing pound after each one of these. And then I have to do 15 minutes for the overtime period, otherwise the call won't go through. Protels don't like it if you set the overtime period to zero minutes. So I'll do 15 and pound, and it'll read out to confirm. 25 cents, minutes, zero, 15 minutes. The reason it said minutes is because I put zero, zero for the uh, amount of time that they could have for the call. 
because of that, it didn't have a number when it was reading the amount of minutes they could stay on. Now, what I'll do is define the number that I want them to go to, which will say the time number on my switch, which is 5311888. We'll achieve this by saying pound pound three, and then I'm going to type 5311888 and pound. That's going to read the number to the customer. I'll put the payphone up to here so you can hear it. So you may be able to hear them getting read up the number. I get a confirmation tone. And now I'm going to hit pound pound eight. That's going to hang up and send them on their way to the number. And now we can hear them over on the call. Making a little addendum here, you might be wondering, actually, um, since this would be the most logical thing, could you give a customer a free call? And as a matter of fact, you can. Um, I'll have them put 50 cents in again just to show you how this might work. Um, could you give a customer a free call? You sure could. Um, say the phone ate their money or whatever. I don't know why I put money in, but we'll refund by doing pound pound six. Now, there's an interesting way that this thing handles free calls. By default, you can program in a PBX access code, so if the phone has to dial something on a PBX to access an outside line, um, that's programmed into the phone, and it will do that automatically. So earlier, when I gave them the time number for 75 cents or 25 cents or whatever it was, um, their phone automatically dialed the PBX access code. Now, for some reason, when you give a free call, it will not automatically put in the PBX access code. I'm guessing there was just some kind of glitch or oversight in the programming. So you can give a customer a free call as long as you know the PBX access code and explicitly dial it, which you would not have to do under any other circumstance if it was a paid call or anything like that. In my case, it happens to be 8-2, so here's what we're going to do. I am going, actually, and come to think of it, I think this can only store 11 digits, so you might not be able to do this um, if you have a two-digit PBX code and a ten-digit number. I'll have to try that. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so, say we want to give them a free call. I might have already refunded, but we'll do it again. Okay, I did. And then, so, we'll define a new rate table. Pound, pound, nine. We'll do zero, zero, zero for no charge. Zero, zero for unlimited minutes. Zero, zero, zero for no overtime charge. And for overtime period, we'll do the max, which is 15 minutes. Minutes zero, 15 minutes. And that's what it sounds like. It doesn't have any numbers to read when it says minutes or cents. So now I'm going to give them the number, but like I said, I'm going to have to explicitly dial my PBX access code. It's going to be 82, and then the number. They're getting read out the number now. And now I can send them on their way with pound pound eight. And we'll hear them go through. And there they are going through. Now we're going to find out if they can do a two-digit number with um, a ten di or two-digit access code with a ten-digit number, because that would be good to know if it's 11 or 12 digits. All right, let's give them a two-digit access code with a ten-digit number. actually truncates the last numbers, so you can only put 11 digits in there. So if you were using 10-digit numbers with a two-digit access code and you're trying to give them a free call, you're pretty much screwed. Um, now that actually wouldn't matter because in practice your outside line is going to be 9, so you could do that. Um, let me verify that one more time. Yeah, so you couldn't do that. Um, with a two-digit access code. Just then programming oversight, I guess, but all stuff to be aware of if you wanted to, for some reason, implement this feature on your ProTel, which is automatically implemented. You just have to dial 211, and then the phone is put in a mode where it's expecting commands from an operator. All right, goodbye.